Hello and welcome to this introduction to October. October is a CMS built using PHP and is based on the Laravel framework. The reason we made October was because we had a lot of frustration with systems out there that seem to get more and more complicated every year. So we built a platform that gets back to the basics of web development and is also fun to use. We've been working really hard on this, so I hope you enjoy it. This is the backend interface for October. You might notice it's a very clean and simple interface, devoid of any unnecessary clutter. To the top, we have the main menu. And below that, to the left, there's the sub-menu. And this is an expansion on the currently selected main menu item, which is the CMS. The rest of this content area here is free to be used by any of the backend pages. Now I'd like to demonstrate some of the features of the CMS. The first being pages. Pages hold the content for each website URL. So let's create a new one. We'll call this page home as it is the first page we'd like people to see when first opening the website. We'll give it a URL of just slash. We'll enter some content in the markup area and click save to create this page. Now that the page exists, we can preview it in the browser by clicking the preview button. And there you can see the content for this page. Now you might notice this page looks a little plain. That's because it's missing a layout and that moves us on to the next feature. Layouts define the page scaffold. That is everything that repeats on the page like a header and a footer. So let's create a new layout. We will call this layout basic and it can have a description of just a basic layout. I'll enter some content for this layout in the markup area and we'll click save to create this layout. Now if we go back to the page we created from before, you can see we can now select this layout from the drop down menu. So if we click save and then preview the page in the browser again, now you can see a style sheet has been applied to this page and it also has a header and a footer. The next feature I'd like to show you is partials. Partials contain reusable chunks of HTML markup that can be used anywhere throughout the site. So we might like to create a new partial that contains some links that we can use in various places. We'll call this partial links and we'll give it a description of some links. I'll paste in the links in the markup area and click save to create the partial. Now we can place these links anywhere we like. So let's place them on the home page. We do that by using the partial tag along with the name of the partial that we created. In this case, it's called links. So if we save this page and then preview it in the browser again, you can see that the links appear. Partials also carry a secondary feature, and that is they can be updated dynamically by the Ajax framework and I'll show you how that works. But before I do, I'm going to switch my mode of development to point out that October is not just interface driven, it's also file based as well. So we're using a text editor now. If you remember the home page we created from before, it can be found in the pages directory. Along with the layout we created called basic in the layouts directory and the partial called links in the partials directory. All of the settings that we used are retained at the top of the file, called the configuration section. This becomes useful when collaborating with other developers in a version control system like Git. Returning now to the next feature, the Ajax framework. October comes with an Ajax framework baked in that allows the page to be updated dynamically. I'll show you how this works by creating a simple calculator. The first thing we need to do is create a new page for our calculator. So let's add a new file under the pages directory and we'll call this file calc.htm. Then we need to give this page a URL. So we'll give it the URL of calc and then we can also assign it with a layout. And we'll use the layout we created from before called basic. We then terminate the configuration section by using two equal signs. Now I'm going to paste in the form that we're going to use for our calculator. As you can see, this form has three inputs and a submit button. The first input is a value, the second input is an operation, and the third input is another value. Then when we hit the go button, 
we're going to apply a calculation from value 1 to value 2. Below the form we have a results section. This will be the partial that contains our calculation result. Notice inside the form tag we have these non-standard attributes that begin with the word data. These tell the AJAX framework that when we submit this form we'd like to do it using JavaScript without the page refreshing. The first tag, data request, defines the AJAX event handler. This is a function name used to process the form data and produce a result. In this case, it's called onTest. The second tag, data request update, says that once the request has finished, we should update an element on the page with a specific partial. In this case, we want to update using the calc result partial, an element on the page with the identifier result. At the moment this element doesn't exist, so I'm going to add it. Now we should create the event handler used by this form. We do that by adding another section to this page called the PHP code section. Here we can define our event handler called onTest. You can see in the code here, it processes our form data and produces a result. The result is made available to the next page cycle as the variable called answer. This will be used by our partial to display the result. All that's left to do now is to create our partial. So we'll do that by creating a new file in the partials directory and we'll call this partial calcresult.htm. As you can see in the markup here, the very first thing we do is check for the presence of an answer variable. This variable is supplied to this partial by the onTest event handler that we created before. If the answer variable exists, we'll display it to the user. Otherwise, we'll display a friendly message to say, click the go button. Switching modes again now, let's have a look at how our calculator looks on the back end. As you can see, the calculator page we created now exists in the list of pages. Let's click it and have a look. Let's also close some of these form areas to make a bit more room. All the markup we created for our calculator is here, as you would expect. The event handler in the PHP code section can be found in the code tab here. We can also check the existence of our partial calc result by looking in the partials area. There it is, so let's have a look. All the markups there. So finally, let's preview our page. And here is the AJAX calculator. So let's take a look. We enter two values here, click go, and you can see the result is displayed on the screen without the need to refresh the page. If we change the operator, we should get a different result. That's the power of the AJAX framework feature. You can update the page dynamically and easily with almost no knowledge of JavaScript. The final thing I want to demonstrate is my favorite feature called components. Components are an extensible feature to October. They're provided by plugins and are essentially building blocks that can be attached to any page or layout. They provide rich functionality like the calculator example, but with only a small amount of markup. Let's try out this demo component provided by the October demo plugin. It's a to-do list and we'll need a page to use it on. So let's do that first. We'll call this page to-do and to attach the component to this page, all we do is click on it. Each component uses an inspector with unique properties that can be set. In this case, the to-do list has an alias, which is a unique name given to this component when using it on the page or layout. It also has a maximum amount of items that it's allowed. We'll leave the default alias as demo to do, but we'll change the maximum items to only three. The component can then be rendered on the page using the component tag and then the alias, which in this case was demo to do. This will render the component on the page. And the reason this is my favorite feature is because that's all that's required. So if we save this page, we can immediately preview it in the browser. And this time, instead of having a calculator, we have a to-do list. So let's try it out. I might want to read some more documentation. And of course, install my copy of October. As you can see, I have effortlessly added this functionality to the page using the power of components. 
So that concludes this demonstration of October's core features. You can look out for more screencasts with more in-depth details. I hope you enjoy using October as much as we do. Goodbye.